outstudied organizations and people, individuals, sports figures, scientists, and what I've noticed is there is in fact a technology, there is in fact a system where a person can achieve and how a person can achieve a quantum leap. Now, in addition to that, I spend a lot of time reading material like Peter Drucker and, uh, and, and motivational speakers like Wayne Dyer and uh, the passion for excellence. In fact, I believe that the passion for excellence and the whole area that motivational speakers are taking these days is back to ba basic values. They're common sense techniques. Management by wandering around, getting in touch with the customer. Now, I love that. But looking at the whole of corporations, I have noticed in the past two years a dynamic change, not just with this corporation, but with other corporations that I've worked with, from uh, GE, Union Carbide, uh, digital equipment, and that is that the old techniques, which has served very well, the hardworking, intelligent concept of creation, has reached a ceiling, and now people are searching for something else to take them to the next level. And to me, there is always another level. No matter where you are, no matter how good you are, no matter how great you are, there is another level to go to. And that level, to me, steps beyond a goal. A goal in itself is absolutely necessary, but a goal in itself is absolutely limiting. There are three major fears that hold all of us in life, that hold us and stop us from reaching past limitations, to sell, to work as a team. The first fear is fear of change. It's a natural fear. It's a fear we all have as human beings, fear of change. Usually what happens is we invent a picture in our mind or an expectation in our mind of what's going to happen if in fact there are changes in our life and it's extremely upsetting because the pictures, if the fear controls us, is usually negative. But if you look back on your life and Day is constantly taking what I say and applying it on a personal level, is that almost all change that you've ever had, no matter how you felt at the time, in retrospect, serve to make you bigger. I believe very strongly in shaking my life up about every seven years. Totally just taking a you know, shaking that up and, and, and going through my fear. And I know this, if I'm not feeling some kind of fear, and I'll define the fear, I know I'm not growing enough. Because most people spend their lives living in what I call the comfort zone of living. And that is the playing it safe. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong. And the second point of today is there is no right or wrong in the field I work in. There is no right and there is no wrong because the judgment of right and wrong is in itself limiting and comes from a value system or a belief system and I'd like to step beyond that today. So to play the game of everything I say is true, to know that there is no right and wrong and when it comes up, oh, and I'm just saying for the workshop, not for life, just for here, for you to be able to see because this afternoon is about, this afternoon is about perspective expanding perspective, being able to see that which you may not have seen up to this point, and once you do that, you see opportunities that were never there. So fear of change, fear of rejection, and the third fear that we'll look at is fear of success, and that's a big one. And fear of failure is not one of the major fears, but fear of success is. So we'll look at how fears actually create the fear. Now, how do we start off? Well, quantum leap thinking starts off by two words called paying attention. Now that may sound very simple to do, but the fact is that it is extremely difficult to pay attention. Here's what I want you to do. This is a game and we're going to play like five or six of them this afternoon. I just don't want you to communicate with anyone else next to you about this. Just see what your experience is. Read that once, read it again, and I want you to raise your hand if what you're reading up here is Paris in the spring. Raise your hands, just so that I see. Good. Put your hands down. That's not what's written there. So pay attention. Don't say anything out loud. Just notice that's not what's written there. Honest. So read it again once more. And it, by the way, it's been sitting in front of you all the time. I know you've seen this, too. Now raise your hand if what you're still reading is Paris in the spring. Raise your hand. Okay. That's not what's reading there. So what I have done, that's not what's there. So what I have done is I have put a piece of information in front of you, which is called a, an organizational system, 
or an arrangement of information that what you see isn't what's there. Because your mind will always fill in the gaps. It will always leave out that which you choose to not have fit in with your belief system. So what's really written there is Paris in the, the spring. Now, that may seem like a mental trick. It's not a mental trick. This is an arrangement of information. And guess what? Every book that you read is an arrangement of information. Every time you listen to a lecture, it's an arrangement of information. Every time you communicate with your family, every time you deal with politics, every time you deal with a customer, it's an arrangement of information. Every time you walk out of your house and you look at the world or you read the paper, it's an arrangement of information. So a quantum leap thinker pays attention because the mind will almost always deceive you. What a thing to say. It will almost always deceive you. And that is called the intelligence trap. But all I can tell you about risk taking is this. Carl Rogers, who's a very famous humanistic psychologist, said, I wrote actually on his 75th birthday, looking back over my life, every meaningful event that ever happened to me was because I took a risk. So you can't win unless you're willing to fail. And I can, this is easy for me to say because my parents never, I don't know, failure truly doesn't exist to me. It truly, I, I don't know what that is. I've never failed at anything. I've lost money. I've gambled, it hasn't worked out. I've produced theaters, I've put a lot of money. I almost lost my house when I made the shift to corporations. I mean, a lot of things that I could look at is, I suppose, failure if I came from that place, but not in retrospect. It's lesson learning, lesson learning. Now, if you make the same mistake twice, that's pretty jerky. <laughs> and I've also done that. But I never make it three times. So again, it's being willing to fail. It's being willing to be wrong because that's where the innovation comes from. Where else is it going to come from? And I've got a very odd vision of the world. I don't, I mean, I only obey the law. Let me tell you why I obey the law. Because I don't like paying fines and I don't want to go to jail. And that is the only reason. It is not a moral obligation to me. I play the game that gets me what I want. But I also know, guess what, that every single rule in this world somebody made up. Everything. Every literature, every scientific experiment, somebody made it up. Why not me? So what I'm saying to you is if you write your script the way you want it, and even if you're afraid, <laughs> even if you're afraid, because you aren't taking a risk if you don't have some fear. Let me tell you another observation on fear. When people sometimes say, I'm afraid, like it's a two-edged, I'm afraid, you flip it around, and it's, I'm excited. Whoops, I'm afraid. Oh, I'm excited. Whoops, I'm afraid. I'm excited. Because fear and excitement are often very, very close. Now, I'm not talking about the limiting fear. Fear of change, fear of rejection, and fear of success. So the technique to break through fears is being able to shift perspective. When I look from here, like looking at the water glass half full or half empty, it's a choice made by conditioning or programming. Does that, does that help? Good. Yes, gentlemen, stand up here. Uh, cold calling is my fire And uh, what do I have to do each time I uh, make a cold call? Do I have to open the fire to the tree? Tell me the process that goes on with you that you can explain as fear to me so that I see the whole picture. If you give me the information, maybe I can help you. Well, I'm, I'm kind of over the uh, idea of rejection, the fear of rejection. Okay. I can't, uh, I don't want to call somebody else and have them say, I'm not interested, or how come you call me now, or okay. bother me, uh, something like that. Okay, number one, I would make a sign that would remind you how you would feel if somebody was calling. Number two, I would visualize, and we'll talk about it, because that's the center and core of what's going to happen later, I would visualize that person responding to you, because, you know, we function out of the pictures and images in our, in our head. We, if we create up here the reality first, and I'm sure that many times the people that are the top sales people here have in fact made the sale here first. Then they make the sale here. So what I would do is remind yourself of all the, the mental set that you do before you pick up the phone. Now, I'm going to ask you to tr actually try this. Actually, not try it. Just do it. But 
at the same time, notice the results that you have. Notice what goes on up here to create the response over to the other end of the phone. Because I, and I believe this to the bottom of my soul, if you tell the truth, if you tell the truth, you will disarm and you will sell. And the truth being, this is what I feel is going on over here on the phone with somebody else. Are my feelings correct? Not making the person wrong. Because when you make a person wrong, and especially in an organization, think about this. If you do something wrong and somebody says, you're wrong, what does that make you feel like? It makes you feel like attacking back or getting defensive, or what's the other side of the coin? A retreating, hiding away. Because if you do something wrong, you probably make yourself wrong enough. Now this is probably the most powerful demonstration I could give you of how your imagination works and affects you in terms of your day-to-day -day functioning, including your communication, what you hear, what your body looks like, your health. Then I want you to take the string and hold it so that the end of the weight is approximately one half inch above the circle. Focus your attention on the end, the weight, whatever it is. Focus your attention. Now look at the end of the weight and simply imagine the weight swinging back and forth from the left to the right on the no line. Let your eyes follow the line. Look at the weight. Pretend it in your mind that it's going back and forth across the line. Back and forth. Now look at the circle and imagine it going in the circle. Look at the circle. Pretend in your mind that it's going in the circle. <laughs> now imagine the circle getting bigger. Good. Now reverse the circle in your mind. Just reverse it in your mind. Reverse it. Imagine it going the other way. And notice that it slows down to almost a stopping point before it picks up going the other way. That is what happens when you take a risk to make new choices. You cannot keep the same momentum when you change course. Let me tell you a great, a great way to break through a fear of success. Now see if this sounds familiar to you. You set a goal. This is a goal. And every time you get close to that goal, something happens to keep you from getting that goal. Now, that could be illness. It could be circumstances. It could be whatever. But every time you get close to the goal, something happens to keep you from reaching the goal. And if you examine it inside, you will discover that's your big one. That's the, that's the granddaddy goal of your life. Well, there's a very interesting thing about the way the mind works, and that is that every single human being is afraid, including me, of completion. Because when you achieve that goal, if you succeed or fail, physiologically, the same reaction will happen in your body. Have you ever wanted something so much, so much, and you work so hard for it, and you get it, and you get depressed? Does that sound familiar? You know why? because that's what completion does. It is an unconscious, manipulative force to keep us back. Well, the greatest thing to do to get this goal is to get your vision a little bigger. Think bigger. Think bigger. Because if you set a bigger vision for yourself and a bigger goal, you'll smash through this one right away. And if you set a real big goal, you'll smash through this one. And if you do what I recommend, and I don't, you know, I'm not always recommending things, I just present them, is to set a vision that's so incredibly big that it looks impossible. If you were born with a pair of red sunglasses on and you didn't know you had red sunglasses on, and you looked at everything, everything would be red. Then somebody comes that was born with a pair of yellow sunglasses. They see everything yellow. You bump into them and you say, hey, look at all that pretty red stuff, and they say, well, that's yellow. They say, no, it's red. Wait a minute, it's yellow. My senses tell me it's yellow. 
because that's what I see. Our senses very seldom tell us the truth. The unconscious self, the computer, is what dictates what we hear, see, sense. Therefore, how we communicate and how we work together as a team. So the unconscious cannot tell the difference between a real experience or an imagined experience. Just let that sit for a moment because that's what the whole day is based on. The unconscious cannot tell the difference between a real experience or an experience which is imagined. And the purpose of the pendulum only is to show you how the imagination works. That's all. And a great technique to use in selling and communication is, believe me, your mind will almost always deceive you. Your body will never deceive you, ever. If you start being conscious, and again, I'm giving you stuff just, it's a waking up process. If you're conscious of your body when you're around people, you're about to make cold calls or whatever it is, and your body says, quamp, fear, stop and take a breath. Because let me tell you physiologically what happens when people feel fear. They go like this, they go, <gasps> And what happens is it cuts off oxygen to the brain, which enhances the fear, which cuts off the oxygen to the brain, which paralyzes. That's why deep breathing in martial arts, you'll see if they get in a fear situation, they'll go, and that's exactly what you're doing is you're breaking through fear. Now understand that what I'm demonstrating is called a post-hypnotic suggestion, right? I left a suggestion last night that when I asked them to go back to sleep, they would. Well, it's no different than a suggestion that was given to you as a child that if somebody gave authority to you and you were resistant to authority, you would react, or, or whatever. Whatever fear you have, it's the same thing. It's called a post-hypnotic suggestion. So how do you reprogram that is what we're going to look at in Dave Wedaway. So was that, was that easy for you to get back into it? Good, slate, deep, a little deeper, excellent. Now, here's what we're going to try. Listen to me both. Now, I'm going, to, we're going to, I'm going to take a risk here because this is something that if it works, it is so phenomenal. But I want you to understand that we look through a maze all the time. It's constantly, constantly we're viewing through our programming. Hundreds of thousands of suggestions. We're trying to see the truth. We're trying to have a pure vision. We're trying to to take the marketplace, but we have to do it through all this stuff. So maybe today I can erase a few of these for you. Maybe. You cannot remember the number six. You cannot remember the number six. The harder you try to remember the number six, the more impossible it's going to be. In your reality, it no longer exists at all. But you cannot hear it. If somebody spoke it to you right in your face, you could not hear it and you cannot see it. For you, it does not exist. What's three and three? What's three and three? Three and three. Okay, now, I want you first to count your fingers from one to 10, just very quickly. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do it once more. There aren't 10, there's 11. Okay, now, <laughs> just count your fingers out loud from one to 10. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> okay, now, here's what I want you to do. Now, if you really get what's going on, because the first, the first thing that I want you to get is not about them, it's about you. I promise you, you don't see what's there, and you don't hear what's there. I would bet my life on it. You can remember the number six, deeper to sleep, and everything is as it was before. Now you are totally relaxed, and when you open your eyes, deeper to sleep, deeper. When you open your eyes, you will remember everything that happened in the spirit it was intended. You will not be embarrassed. You will not feel frustrated. You will not feel awkward. And as I count from one to ten, you will feel a very pure energy flowing in you, and you will feel very alive, very happy at the count of ten. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And open your eyes. Good. What's three and three? What's three and three? Six. How do you feel, Dave? Great. Good. How do you feel? Mm -hmm. Good. Let's give him a hand and we can go back. Thank you. Okay. Here's the system. It is very easy. Dr. Maxwell Maltz, an American plastic surgeon, discovered when somebody's face was changed and the bandages came off and they looked in a the mirror, they didn't know who they were and it freaked him out.
great frustration because the image did not match the self-image. It took approximately 27 to 30 days for the image to match the self-image. Now, these are called expectations. Expectations can be very negative in that we want people to say and act as we expect them to. And often we'll try to manipulate that into happening, not the right way. So if, in fact, your programming causes the pictures and images in your mind that you operate out of, in other words, you can't tell the difference between a real experience or an imagined experience. If you're relaxed and your eyes are closed and all of a sudden this dark thought about something bad happening in the future, your heart's going to race, your breathing is going to increase because the unconscious can't tell the difference. Once you think it, it becomes real in your body. That's how we have heart attacks and stuff. So if, in fact, the belief system that we have, the programming in the computer, causes the pictures in our mind, which are either negative or positive, and we wanted to change the negative to the positive, what would be the logical thing to do? Change the pictures. Consciously, consciously change the pictures, because what's going to happen is the old programming is going to be overridden, and with a little support, it will change totally. Out of that, your ability to see will start to shift. Your, here's what I'm going to leave you with as a thought. What I'd love to do is if I had you say something 100 times a day, if I had you say something 100 times a day, a little statement, in about two weeks it's going to shift you, everything, but it's going to take too much time. And here's the statement I came up with. Existing perspective shift to better perspective. Now, here's what I want you to do. In your mind, I want you to think of something you would like better than it is right now. But think of it as it is. You got something? Can you see? Okay, now, rewrite the script in your mind so that it's better than it was. Can you do that? Nod your head yes, just so I know. Good. Now, think of the better and go one step further. Make it even better. Think big. Nod your head if you can do that. Excellent. Go do it once more. Think of the better of the better of the better and make it one better. Paint the picture. Think bigger. Nod your head if you can do that. Now, think about that for a second. That's pretty amazing because if the first goal is what you stop that to achieve, that's what you would achieve. Changing the perspective, quantum leap thinking, thinking bigger and bigger and bigger, that's what you go for. And guess what? Your goal is only going to go beyond that. Just like I read in your prospectus. Your goal goes beyond the vision. So if I could have you say this 100 times a day, what I want you to do the rest of your life is to remember, because the true value of last night and today isn't going to happen. It hasn't happened yet. It will be when you think about it. If I wanted you to remember the context, not any specific thing, if I could remind you, if I could follow you around and just say, shift your perspective, you'd be home free. So you aren't going to say this 100 times a day. I know that. So what I did was try to cut this down. I tried to cut it down by getting rid of these words to existing shift perspective. Now, if I could have you say this 100 times a day, what's going to happen just by saying, existing shift perspective, you would be reminded to shift your perspective. But you aren't going to do this either. I can bet you on it. However, what I tried to do is find a symbol in the world that for the rest of your life, when you see the symbol, you will never look at it the same way, ever. And the symbol is very simple. And it's all over the place. And it's called ESP, existing shift perspective, ESP to QLT. If you would be willing to say that 100 times a day, it takes 1 minute and 45 seconds for 30 days, just 100 times a minute and 45 seconds, you would find that when you needed to be reminded to shift your perspective is when in the crisis situations it would work. So what I'd like to do is to leave you with having done it once. So what I would like you to do at the count of two is just simply go ESP to QLT. Very simple. Not even feel foolish, job. It doesn't matter. Just at the count of two. Quantum leap thinking. So at the count of two, just do it once. One and two. ESP to QLT. Good. Now I'll tell you how I do this. I do it when I walk. Not out loud because people think.